We're good? Okay, everybody. I'll wait for everyone to trickle in, but for the most part, um, I'm Ani, creator and inventor of the Jolto machine right here. And on today's show, I'm going to be working on cleaning up a nameplate that was made with a saw blade, just like so. So cleaning up this, we're going to clean up all the sharp edges and polish the surface without creating any drag lines or anything of that nature. So doing this all on the jewel tool. So this is today's project for the day. I'll be showing you all my secrets and tips and how to get into all those nooks and crannies to clean. Oh, it's so sharp. Ooh, to clean up all those saw marks, you know, and then the surface without creating any, any kind of streaks or lines or drag lines. So that's today's show, you guys. And if you guys missed Friday's show, this was just two days ago, we actually worked on this gorgeous amethyst. As you can see, it's perfect, Yara, perfect. And then uh, just to give you an idea of what it looked like before oh, or what I used. So do you guys see how there's like curves? Everyone said they actually I got such good feedback, you guys, on this. So I posted this in like a lapidary club groups and stuff. And they were like, how did you get this shape? What an awesome shape. And to be honest with you, I did all the sides, you guys, that are curved with our new inside ring mandrels right here right here these are available for pre-order and they're actually at a pre-order price right now you guys so before we get them in i wanted to give you guys an opportunity to pre-order them and so on yesterday's show you guys we were able to like leave the sides all matte so we decided to leave the bevels all matte if you guys can see right here we left the on friday friday yesterday i said sorry friday show we left the entire side right here all matte all the edges you guys see that it came out so unique we've got i got so many interest on this little sucker so much interest listen it's a monday <sighs> i hope you guys had a fabulous weekend today it was a very busy day. I was out hunting for a FedEx package. So that's why I'm a little late to the party today, you guys. Long story, but you know, I just want to say something to you guys. If everyone tells you something is impossible, if you just keep your focus and don't waver that what you want is going to come to pass and it's going to be come to fruition, it will happen. Today, I'm a walking example of this. Everyone said, no, uh, I'm going to say it, Yara. I'm not going to rush it. Yara's like, oh, she's going to tell the story. Yes, I'm going to tell a story. Because today, you guys, uh, something was delivered in the morning, and Yara had to sign for it. He had to sign for it. No one else could sign for it. We don't know why our vendor did this, but whatever. So this package was imperative for it to be in my hands today. No if, ands, or buts. Needed this package today. But the driver said, oh well, and took it away. And we begged and pleaded, can you come back? And the driver said, no. So I called FedEx corporate, and the representative said, no, we cannot come back. You have to wait for tomorrow's schedule pickup. And I said, you don't understand. I need this today. And he says, it's impossible. It's not going to happen. We can't even contact the driver. So I said, let me talk to your supervisor. And he says, it's going to be a waste of time you calling, talking to my supervisor. They're going to say the same exact thing I told you, blah, 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 blah. I said, please let me speak to your supervisor, please. And this lovely woman named Lauren. So I explained to her my situation, and she heard the desperation in my voice. And I told her that I need it. And she said, "There's no." after speaking to her for some time, she says, okay, listen. I'm going to ask them to reattempt delivery, but there's no guarantees. And I thanked her from the bottom of my heart, and she asked me to do a survey for her. <laughs> I said, fine. But I promise you, you guys, I would say, what, 15 minutes? Not even 15 minutes after I hung up that phone call, FedEx 
driver comes to our location and brings a package. And I told her, I'm so grateful for you coming back. And from afar, she looked at me and she went, I got you. And I was like, oh, thank you. So when women, and this is all, actually, it was only women that I work with today. We came together and we made it happen. But perseverance was key. I didn't give up. I didn't even let the thought of me not having that package enter my mind today. And it arrived. When everyone told me, forget it, Ani. It's just going to come tomorrow. Just forget it. Forget it. And I said, no, I'm not going to forget it. So this is the message for today. Meanwhile, how was your weekend? <laughs> so that's why I was late. You guys have been on the phone rushing and trying to get my package. So who is here today? Let me see what all you guys are saying. Everybody's here. Oh, I hope you guys had a fabulous weekend, you guys. Yes, Nicole, it was rude and terrible, but everyone made up for it. Hi, everybody. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Karen Millie Anderson. Hello, Paula. Woman power. That's right, you guys. <sighs> really, truly. But the, the secret is don't, don't let the other people's like words affect your target. Like I kept my eye and my focus on the prize. I kept my eye on the prize. And no matter what everyone told me, I didn't give up. So don't give up, you guys. No matter what obstacles or whatever you're facing, just stay on course and listen to that little voice inside you. Don't give up, you guys. No matter what the circumstances look around you. It was looking bleak, you guys. I'll be honest with you. Bleak, 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 bleak. So, but yay, we got the package. Oh, now Claire goes, now we need to know what was in it. Oh, it was good. I'll let you guys know. I'll let you guys know in a few weeks. Okay. Thank you, you guys. I love you. You go, girl. Hi. Hi, Kat. How are you? Hi, Susan. People can be nice if they just, yes, the world comes back around us. Absolutely. Hi, you guys. Hi, 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 hi. Okay. So, hi, Heidi. Hi, everybody. Okay. So, oh, hey, Barbara. Hello, my girl. It's jewel tool time. I love it. <laughs> I know how. You remember? It's tool time. It's jewel tool time. I like that, Barbara. Hello. Okay. So, you guys. So, I know you guys were all present here when I did this on Friday. You guys. So, this was kind of cool. So, it, I actually, okay, you don't have to get that close, Yara. It's getting blurry. So, this it was what we did on Friday with this design. So I just want to give you guys a little idea. Um, so I made this with the inside ring mandrels. Yeah, you can put it back up on the screen and just kind of get away from my close up. Um, remember I was telling you guys how when you do something unique and different, how people are really attracted to it. I, I can't tell you guys how much response. No, leave it on me. I'm talking. I gotta look at I gotta look at you in the eyes. <laughs> they get it. They get the idea. I I did this with the inside ring mandrels. If you missed Friday's show, know that I used uh, these are the new pre-order uh, diamond uh, uh, wheels to to do the sides and the curves. But what I want to say is, so many don't take it off the screen. Leave it on the screen because I'm gonna reference it again. Yara's happy with buttons today. I wanted to say, you guys that so many people sent me messages of how unique the shape was. That's a gorgeous shape. And I was like, it is a gorgeous shape. So many people loved this shape. You know, you guys, you were all present. We didn't know which way was up. We didn't know what we were doing, but we created a shape, you know, and it turned out to be a wowza amongst the uh, communities. They were like, wow, we have, I have never seen a shape, a stone like this. This is so unique. How did you do it? And they all loved the matte bevel. We did it, huh? Everyone loved uh, the matte bevel. And they're like, oh, my God, how did you, like, leave it matte in the polish? And I'm like, the jewel tool. So, you guys, again, do something unique. Don't be afraid to try something new and unique, you know. I was a little apprehensive, but with your support and saying, yeah, leave it, Matt. Yeah, do that shape. I'm like, okay. So it's not a bad thing, you guys. Try something unique. You can always modify it later. You know, if, the, if this shape didn't come out that great or if I didn't get a good response from others, we could have just changed the shape, maybe turned it into a teardrop or whatever. You know what I mean? So no harm is done. So try. Try something new. That's my word for today. Mm -hmm. And woman power, yes. 
Okay, so you guys, today I want to show, I finally got a piece. One of my customers here in La Los Angeles, he's a jeweler, and he makes these amazing nameplates. And um, so they saw them. There, it's all sawed. All the nasty saw marks are there. You guys can see it. And I wanted to show how to clean them up and how to clean the surface without creating any kind of drag lines. So, like for example, okay, Yara, just back up. Okay, I'm gonna show that too. <laughs> so, he's, he's been asked by many, many jewelers, how are you getting this polish so good? And he's like, you know, Ani, I'm sick and tired of telling these guys I use the jewel tool and then them go, what? No, they don't get it. So he goes, I'm sick and tired of it. So I don't even bother telling them anymore. He goes, I tell them it's my secret. I go, good for you. <laughs> but he, he loves his jewel tool. And he says before he would waste so much time on polishing these. And he says now with the jewel tool, he goes, it's a matter of minutes. We get in there, we clean all the nooks and crannies, all the saw marks, and then polish the surface. And he says, we're done. He goes, so he loves his jewel tool, obviously. So but I wanted to address this because whether or not you're making a nameplate or whether you're just sawing something, you know, like a bezel or whatever, to clean up those saw marks, how do you do them or how do you get into hard to reach areas and then do a surface this flat? So I'm gonna, it's gonna be really quick today, but I have some exciting stuff coming up this week. So this week, I will be visiting the huge headquarters for, I'm not gonna tell you who buys from there, but people you know do, but they sell all sorts of beads, findings. So everyone loves, you know, my pinch bail here. Everyone kept asking me, where did I get this pinch bail? Where did I get this pinch bail? So for example, the pinch bail is from these, this manufacturer. So I'll be headed out to their headquarters. I'm going to try tomorrow, but if I can't tomorrow, Wednesday for sure. And I asked them if I can do a live filming from their place. And they said, of course, for you, Ani. So I'm going to be filming directly from there. So if I show you guys stuff, tell me if you guys want them. I mean, we're talking, Yara, how many square foot is this location? Over 200,000? It's huge, like huge, upstairs, downstairs. And they told me, you, you can have all the, the whole place to yourself. Go and enjoy and film and show whatever you need to show. So I'm excited to show this. So it's either tomorrow or Wednesday. I have an appointment here tomorrow. So if that ends early enough, then I'll head over there tomorrow. But if it doesn't, then for sure Wednesday, I'm gonna be filming from the location where they sell, and they sell so many beads and so many stones and so many crystals. She was saying that the minerals are so popular, she was saying amongst people. So just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, and then I'll be showing you guys how to work tomorrow. Uh, if I don't do this tomorrow, I'll be showing you guys how to texture inside. Um, I don't have time today, or if not, I would do it, but I'm gonna show you how to texture inside curves like this with the inside ring mandrels. Just real quick, that's just a little sneak peek, but let's do this today. So there's so many cool things I have. I got the Durston stuff coming up this week. There's a lot of cool stuff, but I'm working on it. And I want to put kits together. So if, we, if I do a project here, you guys can maybe even do the project along with me or I show how to do it so you guys can achieve, achieve it. Got so many ideas for you all. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Okay, let's get started. So first things first, I'm going to address all the sharp. Ugh, you could feel it. It's so sharp. So I'm going to address to knock off all the sharp edges and I'm going to be using the 3M brushes. So let's get started. So this is what we've got. I'm going to leave you right here for a second. Put my fingers on. So do you guys, see, oh wait, hold on. You guys see this? So we've got really sharp edges. Can you guys see, Yara, yeah, is it focused? To show the saw blades. You guys see the saw blades right there? The saw blade marks. Yeah, the saw blade marks. So these are created by you know, using your saw blade to go ear, ear, ear. So all these marks, I will show how to clean that up. So we're gonna be using the brushes to clean those up because I don't wanna round over the edges. You kinda wanna keep it nice and crisp. So I'll be using probably 
the 220 grit and it's not a bad idea to have the two inch on hand you guys see this so the two inch is going to be stiffer you guys versus how this is more softer but this will get into like areas like this you guys see that it'll get into it and i'll show you how to get into these with the little ones this also is great too it'll still get in there you guys see that but it's a little bit more stiff it's it's silver you carol said uh, carol asked what's the metal it's silver this is silver so this will get in but it, if you don't have a two inch you can use the three inch i'll show you guys how both of them work so let's get started let me put my, my little fingies on my little fingies No, let me have my cat. No kidding, right, cat? Cat, I swear to you. Where is she? Where's my cat? Cat, uh, honest to God, cat just asked, did you think that these lives would have <laughs> turned into a what, what a, a life of their own? Honest to God, cat, I started this to have you guys occupy yourselves during our quarantine time. I had no idea this was going to happen, but I know it's helped so many, and I know um, it, you guys are enjoying them. And I, who's, who am I to stop this fun? Who, who am, who this little measly old little Ani? Who am I to stop this fun? No, I'm not stopping. If anything, I want to add more. We're going to have um, guest appearances. You always figured out how to bring people in with me because some people want to be on with me. So virtual, virtual, of course. I mean, if I can drag someone in here, I would love to. But so anyways, ex yeah, it's crazy, huh? But see, I, I'm a walking testament of if you don't do it, you won't ever know. So there you go, you guys. I, I'm, a do I'm a doer. So let me go ahead and find a finger for crying out loud to use. They're all, okay, so I'm going to use this. Now, you can run this at full speed, low speed. Lower speed is going to be able to feed into hard to reach areas. When you speed it up, it's going to get stiffer. You'll see the difference. Right now, I'm going to run it at full speed. Put my vacuum on, turn my lights on. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I want to get into all the little nooks and crannies. Oh, um, that's a good question, Wendy. I don't know what gauge he cut this on. Hold on, I'll tell you right now. Good question before we start. Yeah, measure it. We'll measure it in millimeters. You guys can see. Well, we want millimeters. So 0.69 millimeters. So just over a half a millimeter. This is usually the thickness that they like to do, the, pen, uh, the name plates. It's not too thin, so it's not flimsy, and it's not too thick to waste too much metal. But you guys can already see how it cleaned up all the saw marks. Do you guys see that? I mean, within seconds, it was so fast. So, like, here's a saw mark. Yo, did you take a picture of the saw marks? Can you take one quick picture of it sh so I can show people how it, you can clean them up? I'm going to have Yaro do a quick zoom. So, hold on. I'm going to have Yaro do a quick zoom because I want to show you. If you guys can't see it on this camera, so I can do a side-by-side -side and post it. But do you see how quick that was? Just real quick. And then we'll polish it up with the other grades. Why is this like flaking? With the other grades, and then I'll polish the surface. And you don't have to use anything besides your felt wheel to polish the surface, you guys. Guess what I have? Okay, you guys talk to Ani. Question and answer questions and answers with Ani. You guys have me right here while Yara is taking a picture. Let me see what you guys said. Uh, mahalo, Paula. Hi, Teresa. Cat, you're so cute. So the metal is silver. I think I answered that. Hi, Carol. How are you? Hi, Gail. Hello, Blanche Costa. Hello, Carrie. Aw, I do. I think of you guys all the time, really. I, uh, so I can't wait for this week. You know what I would like you guys to do? I would like you guys to send me um, things that you've been looking for. Is there any kind of stones? beads on a strand things like they've got strand like I, I like long time ago when I was there I got all of this stuff I have like tons of this stuff 
like I got like they have like I love the colors I have more of this too um, but like they have gazillion stones and beads and turquoise and just unique stuff that just will blow your mind this is where a lot of the pros go and buy a lot of their supplies you can't just go in there um, but I know them so I called them and they're like oh my god honey where have you been we haven't seen you forever I'm like I know I've been busy so if you guys are looking for anything particular I'll be getting a bunch of stuff only because you go in there as a woman and you're like I need everything <laughs> you know so I know I'll be buying stuff even for me even to do on lives and to do projects with you guys but if there's something particular that you've been looking for let me know I'll be your personal shopper you guys that's right just call me your personal shopper that's what I am okay and I'm done with this Yara oh that's perfect Yara did you do the sides too like where it's really rough like this side or this side yeah more sides Yara more sides He's so good. You guys see the detail. So who else will we got? So any, give us a hint. I love it. <laughs> the suspense is killing me. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, Beans. <laughs> Hi, Georgiana Chan. Oh, you. Chan. Georgian. Georgian Chan. Okay, so you guys, Yarrow's done, he says. He's over it. Oh, so. I'm excited for this week. So remember, if you guys have a particular stone you want to see or bead, beads that you're looking for, or stones you're looking for, let me know. I will summon them and they will find it for me and I will show it to you on air. Like, I don't know. I have no plans of how it's going to turn out, but I have a feeling it'll be lots of fun. So I'm ready to rock and roll. We're back. You guys are back. Okay. So what I just want to show you guys just to make sure you guys see look at how all the you guys can can you guys see how the saw blade marks are gone versus something like this you guys see the saw marks here you know, is that obvious bring, should I bring it closer so these saw marks you guys see those and then these are the ones that I smoothed down Oh wow, okay, so this is smooth. It's smooth because I used the brush. These are not smooth. There, you guys see that? See how rough it is, how rough it is right here. Okay, so I just wanna make sure everyone understands what I'm talking about. So you just go like this, you guys, and just keep it moving like this. Kinda don't stay in one spot and it should smooth them all over, just like that. Easy peasy. Don't stay on it too long. Get into that nook and cranny. You don't want to destroy the detail, you guys. You see that? You see how I'm holding it? And you kind of go like go like this and get into the nooks and crannies. A little up and down zhuzh. Yeah, just a quick, yeah, that's perfect, Yara. Side view like this. You see how I follow it? Just follow it up and down. Don't get into, don't push too hard. Kind of just a zhuzh, just like that, nice and smooth. And so we'll pretty much do all of it really quick. And so look, I want to show you a little technique. Okay, we're done. So all of the, oh my God, if I had feel a vision, what a difference. This was so rough before. Okay, so now we'll polish it, but I still want to get into like this area and this area right here in between. So I slowed the speed of the brush down and I'm kind of going to work on it and kind of feed it in like this and tilt it. Do you guys see that? Yara, you, you want to show that one more time? Yeah. So basically what I want to do is I want to get the bristles in there. So I get it in there and then I kind of tilt it to kind of get in there and then tilt it this way too. So you want to clean up. Oh, and it got in there beautifully. Nice. Same with the top part right here. So I'm working from the back, not the front. Just whatever you're going to do work it from the back you don't want to mar the front at all there you go and that's all nice and clean we got in there now I'm gonna take this to more of a polish you can go to the 400 grit but I'm gonna cheat and go straight to the pre-polish now 
before I polish, look, if there's a certain area that you want to make sure is perfectly smooth or let's say that didn't cut as smooth as you wanted it. Oh, the up and down. Carol asked, why did I go up and down with this? So, so the up and down, Yarl, if you do, I'll do it without um, moving it. Can you do a side? Okay, so right here, I'm, what I wanted to do is I wanted to get the, the little bristles in there. And once I got in there, I kind of went like this, went up and down like this. And when I went like this, I wanted to shake them in there and kind of rub them on both sides, from the, this side and that side. So that's why I go, I went up and down. Instead of going side to side, I like to go up and down because I wanted to follow the actual shape. And I, and I didn't want to roll over the edge. I kind of wanted to keep it parallel. Do you guys see that? So, all right. So what I wanted to do now is I want to show you, like, if you want to clean up the edges, I would suggest, like, grab, like, a very fine. Here's my very fine. It really says very fine, I swear. So you would take this, and let's say it didn't come out as smooth. Let's say that you want this a little bit more smoother. You see how it's a little bumpy right there on that one corner right there. Like here, let me mark it so I can show you. Let's say I want to make this area a little smoother. It didn't come out as I had wanted it. So you take your magic eraser, and you can s hold it there and kind of just smooth it over. You guys see that? Just within seconds, I got it to be perfectly smooth. It didn't look as bumpy. And you can do that wherever, like, it didn't come out as good as you wanted to. Th this guy's a good jeweler. Here's a little lump right there. You know, so it's pretty clean the way this came out. But for the most part, if you want to just clean up certain areas and just kind of really make them pop, you can really get in there, even with your scratch eraser. Look at how nice and fluid that looks. You guys see that? So don't be afraid to use your scratch eraser on stuff like this, especially the very fine. It'll just highlight things, you know? And you're almost ready for a high polish after this, but I really want to hit it with um, the, the, the pre-polish, the peach one. So now, on the face, you guys, I'm not going to use the, um, <coughs> the scratch eraser. I know there's scratches galore and there's sandpaper marks and whatever, but for the most part, I'm not going to use it. I'm going to first use my felt wheel, but just wait. Not, we're not there yet. Let me just use the 6 micron. So I know I jumped. So technically, this is the steps. Oh, wait, shoot, I'm so close. So I, I jumped from this to the peach. Yeah, I'm so close. Let me back up a little. Okay, there. So usually, it would be this would be the sequence, you guys. This would be the sequence. So this is a 220, this is a 400, this is a 6 micron. It's silver, so I might skip a step. Oops. This is how I do things. So I have it at full speed, and so we're just going to hold it there, kind of zhuzh it back and forth, and make sure you get that polish. So right now, you're going to get like a pre-polish, you know? And there we go. There we go. And that should do it. There we go. Now, if I wanted to get into that hard to reach area, I'll slow it down and get in here. Look again. Let's get in there, rub it there, rub it there get in there same here there okay so that should do it nice and clean and then if you want to do the green brush now the green brush you'll get a quick high polish immediately this is the green brush just to show you how quick you can get it look watch let me get so the green brush spend a little bit more time on it because it's not going to harm anything and you'll get that polish. Do you guys see that shine? You guys see that? I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. You guys see that? Hold on. 
You see the shine? There's no more saw marks. Yeah? Yes, so maybe so. So look, so hold it here. Let it zhuzh in there. There we go. See that? See how shiny that is without any saw marks? Saw marks are, is not a good look, guys. Saw marks are not a good look. For a final finish, saw marks are definitely not a good look. So many people that have online stores that offer customization or stamping or whatever, honest to God, you guys, I know majority of them, they all have a jewel tool and they say that it has increased production by so much, you know? And then you can even use, yeah, let me get in here too. You can even use the brushes to polish. I'm going to show you to polish where, give me a second. Get in there. So you can even, oh wow, it's even polishing the surface a little. You see that? So you can even use the green brush to polish inside these kinds of areas right there. So if you need an, a little extra, so I would actually summon, I would ask the, the two inch brush to help me out on this because the two inch brush is stiffer and I'll be able to get into that nook and cranny. If you don't have the two inch, the smaller ones on your flex shaft would also work, you guys, just so you know. Uh, these just seem to last so much longer, and I have way more detail. Yaro, can you show a side view? Look at how I can get in there really nicely. You see that? I'm going to do it over here, too. So here, we'll do this area, too, right here, this line. Kind of move it around, and there we go. You see how polished that is? Okay, cool. So I'm gonna go around doing, there's another one right here. Am I still on side? Okay, so uh, there's another one right there. So let's go ahead and take care of this. You can touch it up after again. That's a little rough, that one. I might actually have to use so this one right here, I go to top view. This one right here is not polishing like I would like it. So I'm going to have to use the 6 micron. Try not to go heavier than a 6 micron on the face. No, you're, uh, they, they sh so yeah, so, oh, so someone just said that Janie, Janie, you just said that your brushes are grabbing your pieces so hard. Um, they shouldn't do that, Janie. So if you, so if they're, so if they're grabbing, like for example, this is a perfect example of a grab and go. <laughs> this has so many things that could grab and grow, but you have to be um, diligent and understand how. So like for example, so for example, the bristles are flowing in this direction. So you have to be mindful of how they sweep. It's like a broom. So as it spins, so like let's say I want to be mind, I want to get into this area and this area and this area. Let's just say these little cur these little little indentations, these little grooves. So I'm going to be mindful of trying to get in there like this. Do you guys see that? And sweep in. So you can't be aggressive and just like whack it like that. That's not what they're designed for. They're designed to sweep in. So be mindful of don't push hard because 3M has always said it's the actual tips. It's the actual tips that are doing the work. The rest of it is not. So if you can get these tips to make contact with whatever you're working on, these little tips are doing it. So, so by pushing, you're not accomplishing anything. If anything, you're just destroying your brushes. And so make sure your brush is mounted correctly. So since the jewel tool, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore, but I need the green brush. 
So since the jewel tool, let me show you guys something. And you can even get in there. I'll show right now, Yara. Hold on, Yara. So um, just be mindful, you guys, how these, these, so since the jewel tool rotates in a counterclockwise, so that means it's going to spin like this. So the bristles have to touch, like as it's spinning, it has to be smooth. Now, if by chance you put this sucker upside down, which would fit really weird because this is the tapered side, I, I don't know. So as it's spinning, it's going to grab. Do you guys see how it's going to grab? So this is not the proper way. Hold on, let me actually show it a little bit more. So this is not the proper way. So this is the proper way to use a brush. It should be smooth. Do you guys see that? Okay, so, so it should be a smooth... It should be smooth. You see that? Smooth. So if it's the other direction, it'll be catching, and maybe that's what's happening. <coughs> yeah, so just be mindful, you guys, that the large hole, not this hole, not the little hole, the large hole goes onto the spindle because it's a taper, like a cone. Don't try to force, and you shouldn't, for you don't need to force it. It'll sit nice and comfortably. This one is the wrong hole, and that one's hard to put on, and it wobbles, you see, so that's not good. So all of ours come mounted. So let me go ahead and put my 2-inch back on and polish that. Yara found that to be extremely important. So there you go. Okay, so I'm polishing inside the grooves, and then now I'm going to do the face, and we'll be done. Um, but I'll show you how to get inside these areas with the small bristles. <laughs> there we go and that should be it okay so look we've already accomplished some kind of a polish it was just all scratched up but yay so we've accomplished getting po uh, these grooves polished do you guys see that right there and then the little ones right here all polished clean as a whistle clean as a little whistle these are all important details people now we're going to use the felt to polish the whole side. What, Yaro? Mm. No, no, no. All, I, if you buy a brush from us, you guys, we put them on properly. So the the large hole, once it gets mounted, remember, it has to go in the rotation of the arrow. Let me show you guys this arrow one more time. You guys see this arrow? So as it spins, you guys, it's going to spin smooth like this. So it has to. So make sure you have the holes. The hole, the large hole goes down in the spindle. The large hole has to go down on the spindle. Um, you know, it just remember too. Remember, if they ever get come undone, you just take them undone, undo them, and then you can make them thinner, thicker, whatever. So this is wrong. So this would be wrong to put, for example. This is wrong because when I put it on, for example, when it's spinning, it would be like this. So we make sure we put ours correctly. <coughs> so it should be like this, just so you know. I'm so thirsty today. It's so hot today. Why is there no air on? What's wrong with the air, you guys? <coughs> I'm hot. I'm hot. <laughs> it's so hot today. So you guys, I'm going to polish the face. Now, when it comes to the polishing of these things, I always say, try the felt wheel first. Don't use anything else. I know you're going to be tempted to use the scratch eraser, but I say don't. Work your felt wheel because in the long run, it'll finish faster and you don't have to worry about taking any scratches. Unless you have like a really serious deep pit and a scratch, maybe you can just focus on that area with the scratch eraser, not the whole thing. So felt wheel coming up to you next. Come on. So felt wheel we have right here, nice and flat. You guys see that? All I'm going to use is my dual tool compound right here. And we're going to run that at high speed. Okay, so there we go. So I'm going to give myself some compound. See, good amount of compound. Don't be cheap on that. 
So now we're going to do sections. So I'm going to use my index finger. Actually, let me back it up just a little bit, you guys, so you guys can see more of this. So there. So I'm going to use my index finger as a support. You guys see that? So now I can move the neck of the chicken however I want. You guys see how I have control? So these two are pinching. These are the pinchers, pincher and pincher. But this is supporting, and that's the neck. So now I'm going to do it section by section. So I'm going to hold it kind of nose down. Don't go straight up. Nose down and kind of feel where you are. And you should already start getting this kind of a polish. Wow, this is really beaten. So you just kind of see already just within a few seconds. Yeah. Side view. Okay, hurry. I'm going to get off of it soon. Okay, so look, just let me show you with what we're working with now. Now, right here is what we've done so far. You guys see how clean and polished that is? And it's even, no drag lines. You guys see that? And then the, the, these little ones can come off with a buff or your magic buff. So let's keep going, guys. Okay, so I'm going to move along. And if there's any other little, if there's some pits, I see a little bit of pits. Just work like that one particular area, you guys. You don't have to work everything all at once. So, God, I don't know. Is there a pit? Maybe there's like a little one right there, okay? There's like a little one right there. Just work it a little bit more. You know what I mean? Kind of change the angle a little. You know, just change the angle. And, you know, there you go. Look at that. Clean as a whistle. There's nothing there. You guys see that? So now we will move on. Next, put compound on again. Compound is your best friend. So you hold it here again. So be mindful. If you're going to take care of this area, hold that one first and just go like that. Right there. Hold it. Maybe you have to do two passes on it. Okay, we did one pass. Okay, I still see some scratches. So give me a second. Let me put some more compound. Let's do a second pass. Okay, so the second one with the compound will be a little bit more kind of get to the detail of things. You know what I mean? So just be mindful. Try to keep it at an angle, not so flat, kind of a little bit at an angle. If there's certain areas that are kind of being a brat, kind of slide it off the edge a little and work it. But for the most part, I think we're good. I still see some pits here and here. I don't know if you guys see those. Can you guys see the pits right there and there? So let's put some more compound. I don't want to use a scratch eraser, but it'll be there if I need it. But if I don't need it, see, no more pit right there. Do you guys see that? Pit all gone. Bye-bye, pit. See you later, pit, because you're a pit. So then we're going to go for these guys. You guys see these pits right here? Let me go ahead and mark them. These little suckers right over here. You see those? Those are annoying little suckers. All you have to do is do this, you guys. Come on. Finishing is like the key to make you look way better than everyone else. You know? you got Your pieces have to look better than everyone. That's how you stand out. That's how everyone goes, oh, my God, I want that. That's what you want, you guys. You want people to say, oh, my God, I want that. There, we've got those pits out. They're still a little light one, but I'm going to ignore it for now and keep moving. But all you have to do is just hold it again and get it out. So just keep going. So we're just going to hold it here. Just hold it there. Just gently nice, you guys. Just do section by section. See, even by working on this section, I'm working out the pit on the other side. So... You know, it's all, all is good in the world of removing pits. Do you guys see that? See the fluidity, you guys? That's what you want. You can't achieve this on a buff. You cannot. I repeat, you will roll over everything and create a gazillion drag lines. So doing something flat like this, I'm just going doing this all slowly. I mean, th if this was your own piece, you can zip through it a little faster, but I'm doing it a little on slow-mo so you guys learn because that's the objective. The objective is to teach and not to just say, oh, look at Ani. Look at how fast Ani could do it. No, I actually run things a little slow like this too. 
I want to make sure I kind of got everything just so I don't have to do it again, you know? You do it all slowly at once, and then you do one big pass. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And then we just got to do this section right here and then move on, and we're almost done. But so do you guys see how much compound I'm using? Compound is going to be your friend. So we're going to concentrate, you guys, in this region right here. This region right here. This region right here. I love you, Nicole. That's right, Nicole. Tell yourself, slow down. Make it prettier than the rest. You guys see how I already did that section right there? You guys see that right there? Now we'll move on over into this region. Yes, yeah, slow down. Because listen, if I did this fast and it didn't come out, I'd be going back and forth and catering to it. But if I'm taking time in each section one by one and making sure all the pits are gone, I don't have to go back and uh, play around with it anymore. I took care of it. <laughs> she needs a red blinking slow down sign. I know because you want to get it done. I know, Nicole. I know you want to get it. We need a slow down sign. Okay, a red sign. I'll, I'll have one made. Hold on. I'll have a red. So it's pretty good, you guys. Let me just make sure any kind of pits are gone. This. So do you guys see how I get rid of the pits? You just hold it there a little bit. I know you want it fast, but trust and believe. Sandpaper is not your friend. So I just kind of touch up the rest of it. And we've gotten this already, you guys. Look at that. Look at that whole left side. Hold on. Let me try to get light on it. Yeah. You see how the light is following? That's even. And we don't have any drag lines. The, the LED lights are really... Ca that's the LED light right there. Isn't that cute? Wow. So that's what's catching the light right there is the Jewel Tool touchscreen LED. So now, you guys, I'm going to flip this around and now work from here to there. Yeah, I love it. I have the LED light. Yeah, it's right here. They could see it. Hello. Yeah. Yara loves these things. Look at this. Hold on. Where's, wait, hold on. Oh, not there. I need it. Okay. So now, you guys, I'm going to concentrate you guys in this region. Okay. So we did everywhere. I know it's a little foggy, but I'm going to do all of this. Okay. Hold on. Let me get a little closer. All of this, baby. And then we'll bring all of that together because we already did this. And then we do a little buff and that's all. So I already put compound. So let's do the center right there. Get that center all done. Do you guys see how even that is? Again, a little pit has a rose in right there. Do you guys see there's like a little pit? Do you guys see that little pit? Other than that, all of that is perfectly straight. Isn't that just divine? Oh, so I will go ahead and concentrate on that little pity poo. Your poo poo right there. So this is my <coughs> this is my artillery weapon. <laughs> this is my these are my bullets. Use your compound and just hold it there. So if you're going to work on the edge, don't forget to put compound on the edge. So look, I'm going to make a B line for there. So I'm going to support it with my finger, kind of hold it down and kind of work back and forth, back and forth, kind of changing up the pattern but slowly. Don't do fast movements, short little up and down. Short, little, up and down. These are techniques. And guess what we just did, you guys? No more dot. Do you guys see that? It's gone. Gone, baby, gone. But that was a quick technique, so that took only a few seconds, you guys. Few seconds. The what? Yeah, we're going to take care of the black compound sponges. Right now, I pushed a lot of them off, if you notice. There's not that many. Do you guys see? I don't have that much compound smudges at all, if any. You guys see that? Now, there's some here, but I haven't worked that area yet. It's still very dull. I'm. What? Oh, you're talking to the sponge? You're talking to me. Sorry. Kristen's talking on the phone. Sorry.
there we go you guys see that now we we'll see how we're inching our way you can't do everything in one shot you'll miss a lot of detail so you can bring it all together in one shot you know what I mean but as for combating it already we've done that look at that you see and now we're gonna head for the hills up here and we'll be done head for the hills here oh let me get that little hook okay so look I'm gonna pay attention to look we're gonna do that hook let me go ahead and darken everywhere where I'm gonna hit it I'm gonna hit that hook I'm gonna hit this whole side right there kind of bring it all together it's all marked right there it's got all sandpaper marks you guys see the sandpaper file marks that they had put on there you guys see that so watch we'll get all of that done so first let me do that little hook right there so change it up right there do you guys see how beautiful we got that hook perfect so let's continue so if you're gonna do it again give yourself a little bit more compound so if you guys put enough compound every so often you guys won't have any kind of compound buildup. Oh, it's heavy, 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 heavy sandpaper marks right there. You guys see how I took all those the sandpaper marks out? You guys see that? No more sandpaper marks. Perfect. Easy, guys, easy. Just, and then right here, get that little tip down. Hold that all together now all together now and there we go I think I got everywhere and if there's any rub marks that you see that are a little bit rough that you might have problems polishing change it up so like you guys see there's some rub marks right here hold on it's so shiny it's so hard to show you hold on <coughs> thank you Susan put those uh, so if you guys have some rub marks that go there and you want to combat them before you hit it with the buff, just hit it lightly like this and kind of change it up a little bit. And that'll help tremendously when you're buffing. You guys see how I changed the, sh the lines, the rub lines from the felt. And I don't see any more. There's still some right here. Do you guys see there's some lines from the felt? So you can just hold it right here and kind of change it up just a little bit you know there other than that everything seems to look pretty good and oh you could have we already polished it but you can still touch up the edges if you want just an extra pop of brightness on the edges that's another little tidbit of you know especially one that is really going to be obvious that you kind of want to showcase you know what I mean like on the edge right there other than that everything looks good okay so there so now we have this so I would say to clean it up take your 3m cloth whatever you got kind of clean this up a bit the little microfiber cloth I'm getting it dirty gotta take it home and get it cleaned <coughs> and so whatever marks you're gonna see on now are just rub marks from the felt wheel just the felt wheel has created some of this these rub marks, you guys. And it, but that's easy to take out. And we could have done the back, you guys. Don't get me wrong. A back could have been a quick polish, too. But for just my... Uh, wow. That's, that's all from my fingertips. I should put some new ones on. It's all from my fingertips. Oops. So, wow. That looks good. Let me make sure I have no compound. So it's pretty clean, you guys, I would say. <coughs> you guys see that? So let's take a look at what I did. Okay, so I want you guys to see what it should look like. So do you guys see some, everything is polished. There's no more scratches left on. And what's beautiful is there's no drag lines, which is even more important, you guys. Usually when you use a buff or anything else, it creates these streaks. I don't know how to explain it, but they're horrible. And they're so difficult as a polisher to get rid of. You know what I mean? However, I don't know. Do I still see a pit here? A little one? Maybe. If that's the case, you can always touch it up real quick. This is the beauty of the jewel tool. I don't have to do the whole thing again. I can just make a little 
no right here right here i just want to touch those little areas up real quick and you can just go to tail and get rid of them maybe in the opposite direction we'll do this so you see how i kind of change it up a bit it's just a little just a little upsy doopsy right here and there we go that actually looks really nice see that and so there so now what we got to get rid of is the the drag lines okay so now the drag lines you guys hold on i just dropped something okay so not the drag lines i'm sorry the rub marks from the felt sorry we don't have drag lines what the hell am i talking about honey no, stop this nonsense so now you can use your magic buff now if you are scared that the buff is going to get caught into all these things and you're afraid that it's going to warp and you you really want to use a buff to polish i would highly recommend using the buff the magic mini buffs on your felt on your flex shaft to make it more detailed and then that way you don't have to worry about anything catching so here's that's an alternative step we can do that okay or if you want to see how to do it on your magic buff or your regular buff i'm here to show you so let me go ahead and get my two buffs so I have this one and I have the other one that goes with metal. So I'll show you guys both how to work with them. So let me, I'm going to actually gonna take my fingertips off because these seem to be dirty. These are kind of leaving residue, which I don't like. So, <coughs> and so these are not going to cause that much mess. So when I work on them, you guys, you're going to see that I'm going to keep all this away. I'm going to use my finger as a little support, just a little up and down. You guys see that just a little it's kind of grabbing some of the compound from the back but it's okay because I got the shine I want just take a little compound I mean this a little cloth and wipe I just want to show you guys how clean that came out look just real quick just let's give a quick little look see at what this did so do you guys see how shiny that this little swoop of the S is in comparison to the rub marks that were there before not the rub, yeah, the rub marks. So these are the felt rub marks. They're not scratches in any way, but they're just where the <coughs> smooth felt just rubs. You guys see that? Pretty cool, huh? So you'll do section by section because if you guys just go at it like this, something could catch and you don't want it. So I'm always earing on the side of caution. And so I actually will hold it. You see, look, I got the S in there. Hello. <laughs> it shaped my finger. That's because I have compound on the back. Me and my bright ideas with those dirty fingertips. So if anything, my fingers are getting dirty from the compound that's on the back. Is there any way I can wipe this off real quick, Yarrow? Do I have a, a paper towel? Something? Something. Hold on. They're so gooey. No, you know how I would get this off. Watch how I'll do it real quick. Forget this. I'm just gonna use my I'm gonna use my felt wheel. Just hold on. Let me clean the back up real quick, you guys. Just real quick, real quick, see poo. By the time I wipe something down, I'll just use the motorized device that I've created. There, take all that compound off for me. Thank you very much, uh, disc. Thank you. There. Let's get this side. In there, this way we clean the backside. Hold on, hold on. There we go. You guys see how you guys can get rid of compound? And just like that, no more compound. Problem solved, guys. You see, by the time I wiped it down with a darn cloth, I could take it off with my felt wheel. Isn't that hilarious? So there. So now let's go back to polishing <coughs> with the magic buff. So that's the magic buff. Actually, let me show you. So we saw the magic buff. Let's show the magic buff one more time before I move to this one. Just in case you guys don't have a magic buff. Okay, so I'm going to do the rest of the S. So you're just going to hold it in section. Just hold it there. Don't push the whole thing up against it. Just gently nice. And that should do that. We got that section nice and polished. You guys see that? Really pretty. Keep it going. It's actually really nice, the magic buff. Thank you, magic buff. 
there we've got this whole age section you guys see how there's no more rub marks from the felt that actually came out really pretty so now we'll flip it around let's take care of the L because I see a lot of rub marks with the L I have compound new product I love it Susan you're so cute Susan says we need Jolto sunglasses new product so look at how we got the, let me do a little bit more, but real quick, do you guys see how quick within a few seconds I got the rub marks off? There's still a little bit more and I'm going to work it, but do you see how quick it has to be done? Let me emphasize, you shouldn't be on it for more than a few seconds to get the rub marks off and that'll save your uh, magic buff from in last longer. So you just hold it there a little bit more. You see, I'm not pushing hard, very light, kind of wiggle around if you got some compound that pulled from the back just push it away but do you guys see that it kind of grabs some compound from the center but it's okay if that's the case just kind of clean that center yeah it's got some compound in that center oops it's okay other than that it looks good huh so there and then we'll keep going you guys the rest is my fingerprints I think I'm good so I'm gonna just keep going you guys right here so do you guys see how it's a little dull here that's the that's from the rub marks you guys see that right here see that okay right there that's so watch how i combat that with the magic buff just a little zhuzh kind of tilted in yes actually the blue cloths are gonna be in stock i know i like my blue cloth it's very very fine so do you guys see that how i got that thing off Hold on, let me get, again, it grabbed some of the compound from the inside crack. Hold on. Yeah, actually, I just got these more blue cloths in stock. So do you guys see how that fuzz, that cloudiness went away? And you can touch it one more time. You guys see that? Look, now we got it, brought it together. Oh, baby. You guys see that? Gone. No more haze over there. And then now we're going to go over here and finish this side up and we'll be done. Wow, that's coming out really good, you guys. So I would use the, like, let's say if I'm going to use the regular buff, you guys, it would be the same scenario. Uh, if you guys want, I'll show you. Okay, so we did pretty much everything except this section with the uh, magic buff and it came out beautiful. Do you guys see that? This is my fingerprint. I'm sorry. Yes, magic buff full speed. So if you want to just get a little area, just hold it right there. My fingerprints are in there. Ow. Kinda, yeah, hold on. Let me wipe that. I got all my fingerprints in there because there we go. Nice and polished. Yeah, so now you guys see the little haze right here. So if you don't want to use the magic buff, say you don't have the magic buff. Yeah. Yes, no, yeah, no. So the magic buff, you guys, to clean it, this is a good question. I've said this before, but since we're on it, you guys, hold on. So the magic buff, don't use a file. You don't want to destroy it. It will fall apart. Just grab some sandpaper, you guys, sandpaper. You see, this is like a one, 120 grit, or is this is 80? Hold on, what does it say? This says 80, 80 grit, okay? It's got to be a little bit rough and clean. So just hold on, I'm going to put you here for a second. Run it at full speed with your vacuum on. Kind of, you can hold it with your finger. If you don't want to hold it with your finger, use something to push it up against it. But clean it up once at full speed. Yes, so clean it up at full speed at side view. I, side view. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. Clean it with at high speed once. Then slow it down. And then clean it again. This way you can get into all the fibers and clean up anything in there. You guys see how softer it got? There. And that's it. So now look at it. It gets a little bit more fluffier. You guys see that? So when you first get it, it's going to look like a chamois. And then it'll end up looking soft like this. So do you guys see it'll look like this? So as soon as you get it, it's going to start making all sorts of like things like this. Look. Watch. As soon as you get it, it's going to be like this. See how it's going to want to 
So you just want to break it apart a little. Yeah, this one's a big one. Oh, so look, so you basically you want to get this fluff. You guys see that? You want to get the fluff action. This is good. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let's go back. Oh, I was I going to show you? Should I? Uh, let me show you how to use this buff properly. So we'll use this buff to finish the rest of it right here. I didn't finish this section. You guys see that? How it's a little cloudy? It's shiny. I mean, it's polished. Don't get me wrong. But you just got to get that little haze off. And oh, my God. Look at this, you guys. Okay, so let's turn that on at full speed. Now, I'm going to put compound on. Give yourself a good little zhuzh. And just hold it there. Just be gentle. Just a little. Up and down, kind of get it. Don't push too hard. You don't want it to grab. And you don't want any drag lines. You guys see the, how, how it got polished right there? And you're going to continue because I want to bring up some of the compound. So the only downfall with this is you might have to deal with some compound. But other than that, it's really pretty. You guys see that? It's really, I'm going to do a little bit right here. Hold on. Let me go ahead. Just a little bit right here. So I'm just going to hold it gently like this. Don't push in. Just a little light touch. You don't have to be bearing into it. It's already polished. Your objective here, now I got to get the compound out. Hold on. Your objective, if anything, I'm done polishing. I just got to get rid of the compound. So your objective here, when it comes to the buff, wow, that came out really pretty. Your objective polishing with the buff is just to take those fine line scratches, and uh, not scratches, those fine rub marks off. So there's no more scratches. So pushing hard is real. That's all my fingerprints. Pushing hard, you guys, is really unnecessary uh, with the buff when you use a jewel tool. On other systems, yes. Hold on, let me get rid of compound. Oh, yes. Let's get rid of some. There we go. So my objective, you guys, to show you here is that there are no drag lines. So when I see drag lines, you guys, oh, there's still a little buff area. I need to hit a buff here. Hold on. So if you see a little spot, let me just touch this up real quick right here. You don't want to push too hard, you guys. You don't want anything catching any of these hooks. You guys see that? And I got it. If there's anything else you see, it's really, it's so hard to tell, you guys, but... It's, it's like so shiny, I can't even see things anymore. Just a little quick little. I think I put some scratches on it when I rubbed it with the dirty cloth. Me and my bright ideas. Oh well. They're super fine scratches. Other than that, we're good. I'm trying to get the compound off now. So everything's good. I'm happy now. So you guys, so that's my objective today is to show you that there's no drag line. So when I say drag lines, you guys, when you buff so much, it grabs metal from like, like let's say this tip right here, and it'll drag it, and it'll create a, like a deep, uh, like a streak. And that's where people fall into trouble because what they do, you guys, they'll go from sanding this like with an emery stick, like this, you guys with my handy dandy MD. So they'll sand it with an emery stick and everything will look smooth and stuff. Then they go to a buff with multiple compounds to take those scratches off. And what ends up happening is this buff will create like drag lines and it'll pull the metal and it won't be as even as you see right here. You guys see that? Wow, it came out good. It's just my fingerprints. Everywhere else that you guys see things, like right here, that's my fingerprint. Sorry, guys. It's not perfectly smooth because clean. Yeah, but it's super shiny. Yeah, it's good. So this would have been good if I had an ultrasonic and a steamer. Ooh, this would be so pretty. Yes, so I want to put... I, it's, this doesn't really, like... I, I don't know anybody that has these initials. We've got a C, H, and an S. We only have a daughter that's named 
a sari knot with an S. So what you would do is you would put two jump rings here, solder the jump rings closed with a chain, and then you would wear it just like so. It's a big one. Can you imagine wearing this? Hold on, look. Yeah, so yeah, it is a mirror. It really is. But what did we really do, you guys? We didn't even use like a gazillion things. All we used was the brushes to get in between the nooks and crannies. And I used just my felt wheel. Where, where are you? My felt wheel, my compound, and a buff. That's all. People complicate things when it comes to polishing. Overdoing things when it comes to polishing is only because people don't have the means to do it properly and efficiently. So they're always MacGyvering. I use this compound, this compound, this compound, that compound. But what they're using the compound on is a buff. A buff. Or they do have a felt wheel, but it's solid and it's hard to see where they're going. You saw when we use our felt wheel and I had a little pit somewhere, all I did is put a little black circle and made a beeline and that's, I said, that little pit, you're mine. I see you. I got you. And there it was done. So seeing what you're doing really helps. And now you could see why the jewelers that make these name plates or do a lot of saw sawing love the jewel tool because they clean it up super fast. So yeah, I would definitely just put two jump rings on the sides, solder the jump rings so you don't want anything opening up. And yeah, you guys see that? This came out really pretty. Uh -huh. But the secret is no drag lines, you guys. No drag lines. So that is a... The secret to a premium finish is no drag lines. I mean, honestly, as a jeweler, if I didn't have a jewel tool, I would still be working on this piece because I would be combating all the scratches from this and I would still be combating all the drag lines. And I'd work in one section, work in that direction, work in the deal, dan do a little dance, sorry, to get something off the dip. The things that I used to do to achieve this, and I achieved this like. Uh, Carrie, how? No kidding. Carrie Hedrick, these are your initials. I love it. Yeah, look. But it's pretty, it's silver, it's nice. So this would go, like if you had a chain, oh, you hold on, my earpiece is falling. Like if you had a chain, this would go like right here. I should get someone, I'm, I want to have them make me an A. I want them to write Ani with diamonds on it. Uh -huh. Do you guys ever need uh, to have a name made? Let me know. My customer is a very good friend of mine right here in Los Angeles, and he makes the nameplates for everyone you see on, on Etsy, everyone you see on Instagram, everyone you see on the internet. He's got a full-on factory. And he actually sent me Ani written in Armenian and said, do you want me to make you this? <laughs> I actually have a text message. I saw it today. It's all Pave diamonds. But I want, my, I want an Ani like this one, like this one. I want an Ani like this. So one of these days, I'm going to have them make me this. And I'll have comfort in knowing it was finished and polished on the jewel tool. I s yeah, I know, Susan, did you hear that? It's OK. Yara doesn't care. I'll just text them, and I'll say, I need this. And I'll be like, oh, everything's monogram? Yeah. Hey. If you have any customers that need monogram, let me know, you guys. This is extra super easy income. I can help you guys out with this. Really easy. People, like, they, uh, like jewelry stores will take an order for a customer with, like, their design, with a crown on it, with whatever, their family crest or whatever. And so you, they just, uh, someone like a Yaro would design it on the computer. You approve the design and then Someone like my customer takes that, uh, um, that uh, the, the file and will have this cut, plain and simple, polished. And even if you just wanted like a bezel, like one diamond, they also do that too. But, or you want it plain, because I've had a few made for my kids. 
Yeah, they wanted their names written in Armenian, and it's very difficult to find someone to do custom. So he does things for people written in Indian and all sorts of languages. So he'll do everything. So anyways, I just thought I would show this because everyone has asked me to do this, and I finally got a piece of how to clean up the saw. My oh, God, you guys, it feels so much smoother now. Can we have the feel of vision The feel of vision Oh, the feel of vision So you guys like today's show? When you think I can't think of anything else, trust and believe, you guys, the finishing world is is never ending. There's because what happens is everyone keeps creating unique things. And when you create, you have to find the solution to how to polish that. The one thing that people always forget, they study so much how to solder this, how to set that, how to do that. But how about your finishing? If you spend all that time and effort in creating and making and your finishing is poor, your whole finished piece, your whole piece looks poor. So I beg you all, I know you all do it, but please take time and finish your pieces and bring it to a higher level. Every, there's nobody, I don't care what you say, there's nobody on this planet that if they saw this would not be attracted to this. Women, everybody are, loves shiny things. Hundred that hands down, right, Yaro? So who's saying what? Oh, uh, Jose says, "Is there a UPS today?" <laughs> he just sent me a text message. Kristen, can you tell you Jose if we have UPS today? Okay, I gotta tell him. Oh, my dad's watching. Hi, Dad. Look, Dad. My dad's watching. Hi, Dad. Great, you guys love it, beautiful. My dad's probably like, yes, that's how you polish properly. They, money, Tom says money, money. Yaro, did you hear that? Okay, Karen, they would love that here, monogram. Well, you already said everything. Beautiful, you guys. So, tomorrow, if my, I have an appointment here tomorrow. If it finishes early enough, I'm headed to do a live from the headquarters. I can't say the name. Not allowed to, but I'll show you enough so you guys can see. So if I can't do that tomorrow, then Wednesday for sure. Mark it in your calendars. I'll let you know as I'm going there what time I'll go on. I'll post it. But for the most part, I'm excited for this week, you guys. Yes. Barbara, I'm very Barbara, I'm so proud of you because you are wor looking at your pieces with a much critical eye. And Barbara, you want to hear something hilarious. Barbara, so uh, this is Barbara Murnam, right? Okay, much critical. Shut up, Yaro. Okay, so <laughs> Yaro always makes fun of the way I talk. Sometimes I just feel it and I just say it. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. But you know what? I feel like I'm amongst family and I can say and do whatever I want freely and comfortably. So, hmm. so um, Barbara, I want you to know that when I posted your um, your turquoise ring that you made, that triangle one, on my Instagram and on Facebook, people who know me said, oh, Ani, that came out really good. What it, so everyone thought I made that. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it was Barbara who made it. They're like, wow, she made it pretty good. I go, yeah, you want to see what she looks like? She's a pretty little cutie pie. And everyone's like, oh, my God. So Barbara... Your finishes are like to the level of people are thinking that I did it. So it's all in the details, y'all. All in the details. You guys all are amazing. I just have been saying this over and over again. Your detail work is so high, so high up there. You guys are really being extremely detailed, and I love it. But I'm just, since you said that comment, Barbara, I thought I'd tell you that. Yeah, so all of you guys who post really nice things, and I repost it, I get credit sometimes for it, and I have to stop them and go, nope, it wasn't me. It was this, it was Nicole. <laughs> it was somebody else. It was Karen. <laughs> so there you go. So look, so look, you guys, my finger did get a little black. You guys see this? So you guys are not used to seeing my fingers black, only because I took my finger, I took my um, little, I took my vet wrap off, only because you saw the vet wrap was leaving the residue. If it starts to leave residue, you guys, you know, keep a set for whatever and then keep a clean set for using with your buff, for example. Because when uh, I had to take it off because 
a lot of my the residue off my fingertips were coming on the buff and, uh, and translating on here and I didn't want that but it's not embedded so if I was just to take like if I, I go in the bathroom right now and I have a little toothbrush in there with some uh, with some soap it comes off so fast in here let me show you remember I show you guys my wipes this is the wipes that I you guys I use all the time well let me show you guys how powerful these are so when I say if you guys want to clean your pieces with these wipes they're exceptional first before I get it dirty let's clean my diamond because it comes out really pretty when you clean the diamonds love it you see that so good so good I'm telling you guys it comes out so good okay that's good see look and even that was dirty ew look at that my ring was dirty oh no we got to do more <laughs> okay so then you can clean your piece look you guys see that so if I wanted to clean my piece even more without if I didn't have an ultrasonic and I really didn't want to look at already that comes off on it you see that even though it was clean we thought it was clean but it gets even cleaner and it doesn't leave a residue which I love you guys it's just super clean look at that so shiny it's okay you get it shiny okay so then now the reason why I opened it was to show you how to cleans up my finger watch this you guys I hate this black stuff I hate it reminds me of when I was a jeweler and I would have to leave oh my god the things I would do to protect my fingers I would wrap before the jewel tool oh my god I had black up my nose all over all my fingers and I was de de determined to never look like those polishing fingers so all those guys that post I'm a jeweler and have dirty fingers and I'm like that don't make you a jeweler that just makes you look like you have dirty fingers clean them properly keep them protected I never had dirty fingers as a jewel as a jeweler or a polisher I always wrap my fingers I always took the time to protect myself you guys huh yeah Carol you love the wipes I do too hold on why is this earpiece sliding God, did my ear get like slippery over the weekend? What happened here? So you guys, oh, <laughs> just cleaning everything now. Hell, just clean up. What else we got? The jewel tool. So, oh, the, yeah, we have the white. So now let's look at my finger. Yeah, zoom in. Look at my finger. My finger is nice and clean. Finger clean. <laughs> yes. This nice and clean too nice and clean oh things are flying and here we go you guys oh that came oh <gasps> wow that even looks so much more prettier Yara with it cleaned though yes much more prettier look so this is what it looks like you guys after I cleaned it with the wipe you see that it really does look cleaner so those wipes you guys are so handy I don't I, you know they so they're made in Germany by my German distributor, Beko Technik. And I just want you to know, I sell them because I get them from him <laughs> from Germany. But the the little slide that you guys see, they made this because they, the sleeve, they actually made this and surprised me with them because I love them so much. I am one of those people that like use this product, not just sell it, I, I actually started selling it because I use it so much. So they actually make these sleeves for me. Isn't that nice of them? Yeah, so anyways, just so you know. But they're made in Germany. So that wa I wasn't planning on showing those today, but they came in handy, you see? Now I'm clean and ready to rock and roll. So you guys, I hope today was fun. I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow. I'll keep you tuned, in tune, in tuned. I'll keep you updated on what's happening tomorrow. Um, and it should be fun. Whatever happens, I know it'll be fun this week. So you guys, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, you guys, uh, the, uh, the mandrel, the diamond uh, lapidary mandrel set is on pre-order, you guys. And you can save money before I get them in stock. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yes, these. These little suckers. They're so cute. Yeah, and that's the one we use to make this cute little patootie. Hi, my friend. This has become my friend. Everyone's been looking at it and touching it over the weekend. Mm-hmm.
You have been lo you looked at it. Oh, my kids, you guys. Oh, I see how cute. Hi, Glenda. Hi, I love the little purple hearts. Glenda, you and your purple lights. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, you guys, I'll see you here tomorrow. If you guys want to see anything, remember, I'm your personal shopper. Bye, you guys. Love you all. Oh, it's Jose, the UPS driver. <laughs> Hold on. Do we have pickup? Bye, you guys. Do we have pickup? No, Jose, we don't have pickup.